Hey guys. So I just got this awesome live stream set up. So I want to try this out and see if I could do a few drawings with, uh, with DaVinci Eye and show you guys. So I'm kind of excited. Um, you never know how these drawings turn out. So if it's cool, that's awesome. Um, so I'm going to start out. I already started uh, this drawing with classic mode. Uh, classic mode is available on both iOS and on Android. And I'm going to set my phone up on the glass just like this. And the first thing that I want to do is I'm going to turn the opacity all the way down. And what's going to happen is uh, it's going to focus in and out on you and you don't want that to happen. So, cause that'll mess up your drawing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit tools and then camera, and I'm going to manually focus the camera like this. And that locks in the focus of your camera. So now it's not going to zoom in and out on you. So the next thing is, oh, sorry. So I'm going to go back, do that again. There we go. So now that we have their focus set, I'm going to move this picture. So this is my friend, Sandro. Uh, Sandro always complains that I never draw any pictures of him, which, uh, you know, kind of true, but hey, this one's for you, Sandro. You get to be part of the first live stream. So that's pretty awesome. So now uh, I want Sandro's picture to be in black and white. So it's easy. What we can do is we can go to the filters because it's going to make it easier to draw press the filters button. And now I'm just going to go grayscale and hit apply filters and boom, now he's in black and white. Next, we're going to get a size for Sandro's head. So if we draw it on our paper, so this is the top of his head. So I think I want it to be a little bit further up. So we'll go right about here. This is where the top of his head is going to be on the paper. And this is about where the bottom of his head is going to be on the paper. I can enlarge it a little bit more. So I'm going to hit move and enlarge it just a little bit more, just like that. Perfect. And then I hit move again. And now what's really cool is that the image and what's underneath the paper are locked as one. So now I could zoom in if I want to, or I could zoom out and I can draw fine details. So the first thing that I'm going to do now is I'm just going to draw the outline of Sandro's face. Also, sorry, um, I'm like the only one here uh, doing this. So if I don't see your comments, I'll get back to you guys afterwards. So uh, I'm just going to draw the outline of his face. And actually, I'm using the wrong pencil for this. I usually want to do this with a lighter pencil. So I have three pencils here. I have a 2B, a 4B, and a 6B. So I'm going to just start out with the 2B, the lightest pencil. Um, and we're going to do just small outlines. Now I'm going to zoom in so that way I can kind of get them just right. And I'm just really lightly just grabbing the outline of Sandro's face. going around. Zooming out a bit. And as you can see, the cups in the way, but I'll show you how to fix that a little bit later. All you have to do is move your glass. You're not limited to this size. You could actually make a drawing the size of the paper. And we have a, a really cool video that shows you how to make drawings of any size um, using DaVinci and uh, and classic mode. So if you're on Android, um, classic mode is there as well. So, and I promise I'm going to be making a, uh, an Android update in the near future, but it's just not out yet. So I know that's probably one of your guys' questions for whoever's on Android. So now that I have the rough outline of Sandro's face, I'm going to go in and I'm just going to do some light details. So using just the side of my pencil, 
again, just super, super light. I'm just going to go in kind of where the shadows are. So I just want to do this on the darkest areas of the face or the darker areas of the face, just super light. See, there's kind of shadow there, there's kind of shadow here. And this is just giving me a basic rough base layer. So you can see super light. Do his glasses a little bit. Awesome. Okay, cool. So now I'm gonna zoom in. Hey, Francisco Pantadosi, you've been following us for a long time. You're an awesome man. So, okay. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go in and I'm just going to lightly color the darks. Just going to lightly color them in. Anything that's kind of, by the way, this is very, very, very light. So this is going to be our first pass. We're going to do a few different layers. Um, there's a really cool drawing mode that does this for you, which I will save for another live stream on Android. It's called step-by-step -step mode and on iOS, it is called the breakdown mode. So again, I'm just kind of very lightly going into where the darkest shadows are laying down a little bit of lines. where the glasses are, and we're going to clean up all of this a little bit later. Throwing down where the hairline goes. So what I like to do is I generally like to start out kind of uh, rough and then go in and refine the details. and. You know, if you're drawing with Da Vinci or if you're, you know, drawing without Da Vinci, that's the way that you're going to do it either way. And what's really cool about Da Vinci is that it, it teaches you how to draw freehand, not so much um, with lines, but more about how to draw and how to shade and how to lay down and construct a drawing from scratch. So now you can see we have the basic outline and the basic shadows. Now, this is the feature that is such a game changer um, with DaVinci I, and it's called the strobe feature. And what this does is it acts more like a comparator mirror. And if you've never seen, uh, or if you've uh, read, uh, I think uh, David Hockney's book, or if you've ever seen the, the documentary Tim's Vermeer, uh, Vermeer is supposedly or supposedly used something like this called a comparator mirror where he was constantly able to compare the original image with uh, what he was painting and he did that by looking at a mirror and going back and forth. So the strobe feature mimics that. Now what you want to do with the strobe feature is you want to turn the opacity up almost all the way. So now what's happening is it's flashing on and off very slowly, which is nice, um, but it's flashing on and off so I can constantly see the difference between what's on the paper and what's being drawn. So now I'm just gonna go in and I'm still using the 2B pencil, but I'm gonna really refine these details. I'm gonna go into where the glasses are and for this, I'm just doing kind of light circles. Now, again, we're going to go back in with a much darker pencil later. That's going to make all of this really pop and it's going to look awesome. Now, 
the inside of the glasses and I'm, I'm aware of the fact that there's that little um, kind of highlight which over here where the glasses are and then behind the glasses it's darker Go down to where the nose is, just lightly. I'm also a fan of just kind of using light hatching. So either I'm hatching like this, or I'm doing very, very light circles to kind of fill it in. If you want to make something super realistic, you want to do the light circles. Uh, if you want to do something more stylized, the hatching is pretty cool. So again, this is the first layer, so it doesn't have to be perfect. Also, I'm focusing more on this part of his face than this part of his face, uh, because this is where all the detail is. And actually, I'm going to do his collar right here, because yeah, that's a cool detail. The other thing is too, is I like kind of uh, rough artwork. I've always been a fan of Toulouse-Lautrec, kind of more sketchy kind of style. And again, when you're using DaVinci Eye, you can make hyper-realistic portraits, but I really like the kind of sketchiness um, and the stylization that, that you can get really creative with. It's a lot of fun. So I think I'm going to go in and I'm going to use the side of my pencil again. This is my lightest pencil, the, the 2B pencil. And I'm just going to make this a little bit darker. A little more detail to the ear. Now you'll notice that I'm, I'm zooming in and out and it's cool because it's not zooming in and out of or, or making the image larger and smaller it's just magnifying what's on the paper and it's keeping the image overlaid and locked in. So that's something that a lot of people don't know that you can do with DaVinci Eye and it's one of its coolest features. The other thing is too is I'm not looking at the screen the entire time I also check here because sometimes, especially if your opacity isn't up or all the way, if it's kind of lower, uh, you're not going to be able to tell the difference sometimes between the overlay image and your drawing. So it's good to kind of check back and forth. Um, and also people use DaVinci Eye in different ways. Some people just use it to lay out outlines before they do a painting. Some people use it just to, to kind of get a reference, especially for like a model. What's really cool is you can take a picture of kind of like one of your uh, mannequin models, if you have one of those, one of those classic wooden ones. And then you can throw this in here, do the outline, and then put all your details over it. So a lot of different things you can do. Oh, you can also draw things freehand. Uh, it's a great way to learn how to draw freehand uh, you know, using your eye, where you draw something freehand first, and then you can use DaVinci Eye to go back in and see where you were off. So it's a good kind of training technique. So. Uh, now that I kind of have my lighter features down, I'm going to go back in and I'm going to use my next pencil, which is the 4B pencil. So a little bit darker. And I'm going to start where I started before. His nose is pretty dark here. Could have done a little bit better job focusing this. Um, but you know, first live stream, we learn. So now this is where I'm going in, kind of light circles. And I'm going to try and do my darker details here. So again, the shadow where the lips are. I'm not going to go all the way up because there's a little bit of a gradient there. Just 
slightly darker right here. Awesome. I think I want to add a little bit more definition there. And like I said, don't be afraid to get sketchy. You know, you never know how these things turn out. Sometimes they turn out awesome, sometimes they don't. Uh, it's, you know, it's just like any other drawing. So now I'm going to zoom in a lot because I want to get the details uh, and the lines of the glasses kind of perfect. I'm actually going to sharpen my pencil a little bit. Hey, my mom's watching. Hi, mom. <laughs> I think my mother might be the biggest content creator on DaVinci Eye, so that's really cool. And in case you were wondering a little bit about me, I am the developer, creator, and I do pretty much everything else on DaVinci Eye for right now, but we're growing an awesome team. I see Teresa's on here, and I think she's answering some of the comments too. So thanks for joining. She is doing a really fun project. We're going to be getting uh, lessons from really amazing artists and much better than I am. They're going to be teaching you the basics of you know how to draw eyes, uh, how to draw noses, and not not using Da Vinci I even just in general. So if you're not following us, definitely follow us because in starting next month, we're going to be posting some really awesome content of, of drawing lessons, not just specific to DaVinci Eye. So whether you have the app or you don't, it's, you know, you're going to, you're going to benefit from this if you, if you draw or if you want to learn how to draw. Here, it's a little bit darker. So just Throwing that in there. There's the crease of the eye up there. And you can see what I'm doing is it's zoomed in and it's locked in, like I said before. So I'm just drawing a little bit so I get the line just perfect. And I'm only drawing the darker line on the bottom. I'm not doing this, this top part yet. I think I might go back later again with the 2B pencil and get that down. And I'm just moving along. Just getting the fine details there. I think I'm going to go back with the 2B because there's some nice shadow here. Give it a little bit of depth. So I'm going to, with the side of my pencil, I'm going to do where the darkest shadow is first. And then I'm going to go back over the whole thing a little bit lighter so that shadow kind of stands out more. But we want to make it really soft because it's kind of a soft shadow. By the way, I chose this picture because uh, I think it's such an awesome, really cool angle. It's uh, kind of almost superhero-esque, the way that he's kind of looking up there. Kind of reminds me of a, a Clark Kent kind of thing from a comic book. So when you guys are choosing images to draw, try and do something interesting. Um, you know, selfies are great and people smiling are, are fantastic, but when you get something really interesting like this, it comes out so cool. So even if you mess it up, it's <laughs> it still comes out pretty awesome. So This isn't coming out so bad. Could have done a little bit better over here. 
So you can see I accidentally bumped the phone a little bit, but that's not really a big deal. You just kind of slide it right back. And yeah, it's right back. All right, so this is just a quick drawing. Um, I'm gonna do more detailed drawings later, but I'm gonna go back in now. I'm actually gonna sharpen this up. And this is my 6B. So this is gonna be my darkest of the darks. And I'm gonna start adding some kind of final detail finishing touches. And when you layer pencils like this, it just makes your drawings pop so much more. So you always wanna go, well, I don't wanna say always because there aren't really rules in art. You can do whatever you like and experimenting is, is the best part. But um, usually you wanna go from your darkest to lightest and layer over it. So when you're using darker pencils also, again, you never, even with lighter pencils, you never wanna press down really hard. Again, no rules in art, but um, what happens is you get this like sheen, it's, they call it graphite sheen, and you don't wanna do that because then it gets uh, shiny and it looks weird and kind of a little bit unprofessional. So if you want something darker, you shouldn't press down harder. Like I said before, you should just keep layering it over it. So now I'm going to focus on this area a little bit more. Just with the side of my 2B. Go in. Get the shadows. Also get the shadows kind of in here a little bit. Get his hairline a little bit more. Side of the pencil, darken the hair up here. Now I'm gonna go in with the 6B and zoom in a little bit. And we're gonna get some details of the hair. And this is just kind of like light, wispy, strokes because we're just filling in the idea of the hair kind of the suggestion of the hair awesome now it looks like that i missed a little bit of the eye over here so i'm going to think i'm going to go in with the 4b first some of those details. Cool. All right, so I think I'm gonna end it there. So I'll show you kind of what this looks like. Um, I think that came out kind of cool. So again, just a quick sketch, nothing too, 
two details. Um, just gonna make them pop a little bit more by adding some context and background. I'll add the back of the head. You don't always need to use DaVinci for everything. And I think maybe in the future we might go back to this drawing again and just do like a really cool stylized version of it. I'll show you guys what I mean by that. Um, but yeah, so that's DaVinci Eye. This is the first live stream. I hope you guys enjoyed it and uh, have an awesome day. If you have any questions about using DaVinci Eye, you can email me or you can press the feedback button or the help button in the app. And those emails go directly to me. And uh, hey, if you want your picture drawn, shoot me a, a DM on Instagram or you can send me an email and 